Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Now it's been a long time since we watched a race from the first season of Formula E and I had originally planned to do this before the first round of 2022. Unfortunately I've had some more bad luck with my health this year, both catching Covid and a tooth infection. Yeah, see I've got a new gap. It has meant that a lot of videos were delayed that I wanted to do and I'm now catching up. But I'm here now and we're going to watch the 6th round of the 2015-2016 Formula E Championship, the first ever one. And this is round 6, it's around about the halfway point, I can't actually remember how many rounds there were in the first year. And I think for the first time we have exactly the same grid starting this race as we had at the last one. There's no changes to report. So. With the main title protagonist still being really Lucas Degrassi and Sebastian Buemi, we're going to watch and find out what happened in America, the second race in America in 2016. So, subscribe if you haven't already, because I'll be doing more of these, and go back and watch the old episodes. And with that, let's begin. We're getting underway. Here's a look at the grid. Daniel App starts on pole position, his first ever pole position. Nico Cross alongside him on the front row. Nelson Piquet Jr. third on the grid with Lucas Degrassi in fourth position. Fifth, jean eric Verne. He's got fan boost alongside him. A best qualifying performance for Scott Speed. He managed 10th last time out in Miami. Antonio Felix da Costa as well has best his qualifying position with 7th, 8th for Jerome D'Ambrosio. 9th is Stefan Sarazan. 10th is Sebastian Buemi, the man who qualified on pole but had his fastest time taking away for using too much power. Sam Bird is in 11th position. Bruno Senna is 12th for Mahindra. 13th on the grid will be Jarno Trulli in his eponymous team. 14th, Jaime Alves. Shwari. 15 is Nick Heidfeld, 16 Charles Peak. 17th place, Loic Duval, one place better than he managed in Miami. Karun Chandok, we heard from him, disappointed to be down in 18th position. Salvador Duran is 19th quickest. Antonio Liuzzi crashed in qualifying, and as a result, he starts 20th and last. So Daniel Abt somehow securing pole. I always never really thought that highly of Daniel Abt, but he did occasionally pull out something of worth. Um, he's followed by Nico Prost, Nelson Piquet and Lucas Degrassi so they're more your typical usual suspects. Should be an interesting start to the race. Be nice to get through the first lap without any incident. In car of Daniel Abt, second on the grid, the blue and yellow Edam machine of Nico Cross, silver and yellow. In third place is Nelson Piquet Jr. All five lights are on and we go green in Long Beach and it's a bad start from Cross. Great start from Nelson Piquet Jr. He looks to the inside line and he's going for the lead of the race into turn one. Wonderful start from Piquet Jr. He leads, cars flying everywhere, a bit of contact in the back of the back and it's a bit messy down there in the first game. But what a start from Nelson Piquet Jr. Sam Burst in trouble. He's out of the race. So it didn't take very long for it to kick off. Nelson Piquet made a monster of a start. That was actually top quality. Everyone else, they, the corner was way too tight for this race. And I think everyone just treated it as, no one took that corner. Like 90% of the field did not bother attempting to make that corner. And Sam Bird's already out of the race by the looks of it. So, you know, his championship hopes have completely diminished over the last few races. To the tight little chicane and that's got speed in the wall. The American has crashed and he's going to be out of the e here in Long Beach. A real shame, but he has just done the classic and there he is oh. and he's furious. Got to be a safety car there, I would say. That was a big hit. What a shame for Scott Speed. Ah, such a great job in, uh, in Miami. Uh, not, not much you can say really after that. We've got a yellow at turns one and two. Michael Andretti shakes his head. I wonder what's going through his head. Here's the onboard, Dario. Okay, he's coming in there as normal on the line. Looks okay there. Just too much curve. Look, both fuels off the ground. We talked about that. If you get it just right, it flies one side of the car, the left-hand side. Get it wrong, you'll see both front wheels in the air. Boom. Don't lose your steering. It doesn't steer with the front wheels in the air. The guys behind did, uh, did well to avoid the light dog. So not much has been happening over the first few laps. Nelson Piquet has been extending his lead a little bit. Not really any overtaking. And then Scott Speed hit the wall. He had a great race in Miami, but this is pretty much, you know, the level I expect from Scott Speed. 
it's the first time and only time we'll see the Qualcomm safety car, but it's coming in this lap. When will Nelson decide to go? I'd say just sort of on the exit of turn six. He might go just about now. Think, yep, yeah, he goes. because then he, he gaps him a little bit on the brake too. That should be a racing driver. So, oh, big over steal over PK, getting under power. But he's got away and we go green once again. John Eric Byrne is using his fan boost there to try and get past Nico Frost on the Here road down towards turn Here one. Comes. Byrne to the inside. Frost gives him space and John Eric Byrne goes through up into third position. Can he get it stopped? Job done. Turn into third. Textbook pass. Good use of the fan boost there. Absolutely. The rest of the order remains the same. Look at that. That was Lucas de Grassi trying to take his advantage to go past Prost as well. Here so comes Buemi too. Loses two places in as many corners. Will Buemi fancy it? Actually, de Costa's very close to Buemi. And de Costa Ooh. goes for Ooh. it. Up the inside and through. through. Here comes the crossover though. Here comes Buemi with the crossover. Great racing as Buemi tries to get the cutback now to the inside. It's almost three wide because they've got, I think that's a Mahindra behind. It's, they're just coming down towards turn number five. It's, uh, no, it's Jerome D'Ambrosio in the Dragon car. Buemi is through, holding the inside line. De oh, is almost squeeze. in the wall. That allows D'Ambrosio around the outside of six. That Too gives wide. the inside for yeah. seven, but he's lost all his grip. Goodness <laughs> me. He's going to lose it out here too, watch onto the straight. Oh, it'll be that. Just about kept that together, but that's going to allow Senna, Senna to go past Two cars. Oh, and that is uh, Charles Peak, and he's spun around, I think it's Trulli. Uh, car number it 10 is it is. Yes, it's yeah, Giano Trulli. And the car is broken, right front suspension. And here comes Senna, still side by side with Sarazan as they come down into the first corner. So that's Senna going through into ninth position. That could be another safety car, unfortunately. So it seems the safety car was needed to wake everybody up, because as soon as it goes back in, Everything just kicks off. Prost gets overtaken twice. De Costa tries to send one up Boemi, and I don't know how he didn't hit the tyre barrier. D'Ambrosio tried to go around the outside of him and ran out onto the dirt, and then we had a crash at the hairpin, which I think was Charles Peake and whoever was in the other Neo car. So the race is kind of coming alive, but I'm, I think we're about to get another safety car. So maybe there'll be more carnage after that. Got an awful lot. He's got six percent more usable energy than Nelson Piquet Jr. So maybe he could attack Burn, but he's thinking actually I'm just going to sit here and, and and wait it out until the pit stop windows come. We go on board with Daniel App. All the action's kicking off behind him, so it looks fairly calm from this camera angle. The grass. The grass. He's probably thinking, "Oh God, here comes Buemi." Into the right hander comes Daniel App then, and out through turn seven as he hits 150 kilowatts of power so he's running at his uh, maximum power usage at the moment that they can use during the race as he comes across the line just three tenths of a second behind this from Verne to Degrassi you can see Nelson Piquet vanishing off up in front that's a bit more circumspect through the chicane than he was first thing this morning yeah absolutely he crashed in three practice one so through he comes and there's a look back to turn one Look at this, and this is Salvador Duran battling with Lowe Duval. Duran almost going into the wall. It's the battle over 12th position, and this is allowing Jaime Algashwari to fight as well. Down into the right-hander. Oh, Salvador Duran's got up there quite well, hasn't he? I was going to say, he started uh, not dead last, but 19th. Tony Oliuzzi still going in is up into 15th position. But yeah, Duran's got in front of Duval, Algashwari, uh, Liuzzi, and Chandok, which is uh, pretty impressive. But now this is the queue once again for second position. The grassy still has all that uh, all that extra energy. Yeah. In, in so we are now around about the halfway point of the race, and honestly, not a lot has been happening since the second safety car restart. Uh, Nico Prost lost another couple of places, not really surprising, and Nelson PK still leads fairly handily. I don't know if the pit stop's going to happen right away because obviously they've got some spare energy from the safety car periods, but they should be in the pits pretty soon. And I'm not expecting any major changes. You're looking again on Prost. He's closer again. Has he got enough to make it happen on this lap? Has Vern got enough as well? Vern is now closer to Apt than Degrassi is to Vern. There's a look up the inside, he certainly has. Down into turn five, through goes Jerome D'Ambrosio, past Nico Prost. 
and what has happened to, to, to Nico Prost here today because qualified train is going into the back of him there leaves his late breaking far too late and oh. that is a touring car style move back pass surely he'll sort of <laughs> slow down and uh, and re-let D'Ambrosio yeah. through, otherwise too late. he's going to get a drive-through penalty. But it's too late because Senna's already passed uh, D'Ambrosio too. Yeah, that's uh, true. I, I think he's going to feel the wrath of the stewards on that one. A real shame for Jerome because he worked really... So Nico Prost lost another place, this time to Jerome D'Ambrosio. Quite a good move, bit of a dive bomb down the inside. And then Nico Prost just punts him in the back to knock him out of the way. I don't know what's happening with Nico Prost because whilst I, he, I wouldn't call him a great race driver, He's usually pretty steady. He is dropping like a stone and now is just resorting to punting people out of the way. So I don't expect him to finish this race if he's going to carry on like that. PK leads, Jean Eric Verne is second, at Degrassi, Buemi, Senna, Frost, Heifel, D'Ambrosio, and Sarazan, the top 10. Now we have. Now the race gets interesting. It was already pretty interesting, but now, but now it's. Right, this is the situation. Off we go. A, a drive through penalty for Charles Peak. For Surprise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that unfortunately was deserved. Oh, here we go. It's a bit of Salvador Duran. Yeah, Duran and Duval. Oh, is Duran going in the wall here? Oh, goodness me. Oh, Charles. Yeah, the drift thing's next week, gentlemen. Bit of damage there. Yeah, you know, they might have both got away with it. <laughs> both of them sliding through the corner. There is actually a drift competition here next week. So I was right, the pit stops didn't change too much. Jean-Eric Verne jumped Daniel Apt into second. And Nico Pross lost another place, this time to Bruno Senna. And he didn't hit him. Um, other than that, it's just that amazing collision between Loic Duval and Salvador Duran. How they survived that without at least one of them crashing into the wall is unbelievable. But somehow they're both still in the race. And that's as far as the excitement has gone for quite some time. It's difficult. The teams and the drivers get more of a hang of this. It's more of a difficult to find an advantage. And so if you lose anything, you're going to lose five, ten places. In turn one goes PK Jr. Followed by jean Eric Verne. Third is Daniel Apt, who's staved off the attack a little bit of Degrassi. He did well to get it in there. He's locking the rear. It's just a little bit on entry. Senna running in sixth, which is a good performance from Mahindra, actually. A pretty solid run their best performance, uh, best result of the season so far. Here's a fifth position that they've had twice, once with uh, Chandok and once with Senna. They need something today, don't they? Yeah. The Mahindra guys, they just had such a tough time. It'd be good to see them get a decent result. Chandok's running in 14th place. They haven't had a point scoring finish since uh, Senna's fifth in Buenos Aires back in December. Through turn six, the three-way battle over third position. This is all going to start to heat up with eight laps to go. Loic Duval's just done the th fastest first sector of anyone. I'd love three and a half seconds back from Albuquerque. I'd love to hear the radio. Mm. Of uh, to hear Lucas just now to see if he's in, he's holding me up or not, or if he's just he's, they are going to. Oh, to Daniel Apt has been given a drive-through penalty for overusing his maximum power, and there you can see the reaction of the Apt team, heads in hands, a shake of the head, and Daniel Apt has been given a drive-through penalty for using too much power. So they have a limit of 150 kilowatts, and at some point during the race, Daniel Apt has used too much. So a penalty for Daniel Apt. I need a good time to weren't going to last for him. So he should let Lucas Degrassi through, but I'm a few laps ahead and he doesn't straight away at least. I don't know if he does it towards the end. We are only about six or seven laps away from the finish. Uh, Nico Prost's about to retire as well after a really bad race. Well, at least I thought he was going to retire. He drove back out of the pit, so I don't know what's going on with him. Other than that, nothing has really changed. Nelson Piquet still leads. Verne is still in second. This has been a bit of a, a... This is a strange race, this one. I'm not sure about it. As well. Here's a, oh, goodness me. This is action. D'Ambrosio going past Heidfeld. Oh, what was Nick thinking there? I don't know. I hate to say Nick got deserved what he got there. He was squeezing the guy into the wall. The guy's there. You can't expect him to disappear. Bonkers. Yeah, just and he's lost his rear wing there. So he gets going again and he might be able to limp around to the finish, but he's not going to be picking up any points from that one as the battle of the third goes on to the penultimate lap. And it's, the Cressy's got a good margin here. 
Yeah. But when he's going to be trying to build, the, we've seen him do it before, just build up on that last lap and see if he can get closer and closer and, and make that one move. He's going to have one shot at it, and that's it. But PK is three seconds up the road and just take it easy. Shall peak. And he's, uh, he went, he's pretty close to going to lap down, old Shaw. Yeah, well, he's, he's been in that one car for uh, quite a while. He lost his front wing in that collision with Yano Trulli, so he pitted early on. This is Charles Peake, the back marker. Uh, but out there is Nelson PK Jr. And there is the Team China squad. Next EV, but on the last lap now is Nelson PK Jr. Here he is coming down towards Turn 1. Just 2.1 kilometers to go. Really slowed it down there. He's been to a 61.5 second lap, just taking it nice and easy. And uh, he's got a gap, bringing it home. When he's still close to the grassy there. Still not quite close enough to make it happen. It's but, gonna be very, close very enough tight. to make it exciting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So Nelson Piquet Jr. turns into the right-hander. Now, out along Seaside Way. It's been 40 years since racing began here in Long Beach. Since then, we've had IndyCar, Formula One, Formula 5000, also the American Touring Car Championship. But 35 years ago, Nelson Piquet Sr. won his first ever Formula One race in Long Beach. And now, Nelson Piquet Jr. exits the final corner to win his first Formula E race in Long Beach. Great performance from Nelson Piquet Jr. Delight for Next EV by Team wow. China. Congratulations, guys. Jesus Christ. I can't believe we did it. <laughs> So that was the Long Beach e of 2016 with Nelson Piquet Jr. taking his first Formula E win, emulating his father who won at Long Beach 35 years previously, taking his first Formula 1 win, which the commentators mentioned about 400 times during this race. Now, obviously we know Nelson Piquet went on to be champion in Formula E in 2016, this has really been the first drive where we've seen him and gone, yeah, you can see why. He was pretty good at Formula E, at least in this first season. Makes you wonder what would have happened if he hadn't been involved with Crashgate and if he'd had a longer Formula 1 career. Could he have been a top driver? Hard to say. It would have been an alternative universe somewhere. Nelson Piquet Jr. is a multiple time Formula 1 world champion. As for this race, it was a very stop-start kind of race. There's a few incidents scattered throughout, but there was not a lot of overtaking. Nelson Piquet was never troubled. Uh, jean eric Verne did well to get second, but he did jump apt in the pits. Degrassi jumped apt when apt got a penalty, so there wasn't a whole lot going on throughout the race. There was just a couple of scrappy moments. Um, Nico Prost didn't retire, he had a drive through penalty for hitting D'Ambrosio, which I found out after, because the commentators didn't know either. So maybe a few communication issues with Formula E in their first season as well. Other than that, I still enjoyed the race, and let's go through the championship standings. So not a lot has changed with the team standings, Dams still lead the way from Audi and Virgin, with Andretti not too far behind. China Racing jump into fifth ahead of Dragon. Meanwhile, in the driver's standings, it's actually Lucas Degrassi who leads, but only by a single point ahead of Nelson Piquet Jr. Nicholas Prost drops to third with Buemi and Bird making up the top five. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be watching more Formula E, including the race in Mexico this weekend. And I'll be going back to the first season again, hopefully shortly to watch the next race at Monaco. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Do you think Nelson Piquet could have been a Formula One champion? Or do you think Crashgate was about the level of what you'd expect from Nelson Piquet Jr.? Leave a like, tell your friends, thank you for watching, and have a good one.